There's not a day that goes by that I don't have remorse over the destruction I caused. Sean Hopwood grew up in the small town of David City, Nebraska. He never felt like he measured up. After flunking out of college and serving two years in the Navy, he was back at home. Woke up every morning having no plan whatsoever. You throw in some drug and alcohol addiction and depression, that you know, was a recipe for disaster. So it wasn't a hard sell when a friend brought up the idea of robbing banks. To me, that seemed like a solution to all my problems because I had no money, I had no job, and this was an easy, quick way to get money. We would wear coveralls and a mask and a hard hat. We look like construction workers going into the bank. The FBI learned the identity of the men behind the mask, and Sean received an 11-year sentence for his part in the robberies. He had shamed his family, and his parents hoped that this would be his wake-up call. His mother prayed diligently. She continued to pray for me every day, even when there was no indication that I would ever become saved. But Sean wasn't interested in a jailhouse conversion. His work assignment in the prison library was keeping him occupied. He became far more skilled at the finer points of the law than he ever was at breaking it. I started writing memos for other prisoners and eventually writing legal briefs. I really enjoyed the process of solving these legal puzzles and then writing out the answer in the form of a legal brief. The first petition he filed for a fellow inmate made it all the way to the Supreme Court in the one percentile of cases they decide to hear. That one percent chance is for lawyers that are filing. For an indigent prisoner filing without a lawyer, that's about a one percent of one percent chance. He was bombarded with requests from inmates to file petitions on their behalf. It was, you know, the first thing I had done in life that was challenging and that I actually had success at. He also started exchanging letters with Annie, a woman he knew from his hometown. When Sean was released from prison, he knew two things for sure. He wanted to earn a law degree, and he wanted to marry Annie. I went to my sister-in-law, borrowed an engagement ring from her, and decided that I couldn't really make a grand proposal because I didn't have the money to do that. Sean had served his time and was ready to start a new life with Annie. But he still struggled with what he had done and how the robberies affected his victims. No one was physically hurt, but I sure scared people. Sean didn't know how to get past the guilt, but he tried to put it behind him and get on with his life. He called a family minister and asked him to perform his and Annie's wedding. And he said, sure, but first you're going to do marriage counseling. That's a requirement. I won't marry you otherwise. And the first day we sat down, we didn't talk about marriage at all. He just laid out the gospel and asked us what we believed. Sean realized that before he could move on with his life, there was something he needed to do. I was thinking about all the things I had done, all of my inadequacies, and that I needed Jesus bad. I just remember praying, praying for forgiveness, praying that Jesus would forgive me for my sins. And it felt like a weight was off my shoulders, the guilt and the shame. Today, Sean and Annie are married with two kids. He graduated from the University of Washington School of Law with a Juris Doctorate. He will soon begin clerking for the Circuit Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C. You know, the United States leads the world in incarcerating people, and we just throw them away in prison and hope for a miracle to occur. But we know that that doesn't happen, and so I, I do feel like God has given me this position to use for that purpose. And as a father, Sean now understands God's love for him. That's like a father's love, unconditional love. No matter what you do, you're not going to be rejected. That's the kind of love that I try to have with my own kids. They may not listen. They may run off and be very disobedient. But at the end of the day, I'm going to love them regardless. And I think that gives 
I know it gives me peace. Uh, I think that's one of the things that most Christians feel is, is love and peace.